quick strike offense and stingy defense have been trademarks for the Waco High Lions. In the season opener at Paul Tyson Field, Greg White showed that the 1988 edition of Johnny Tusa's troops possessed the quick strike ability by taking the second snap of the game 76 yards to pay dirt. Jack Strether kicked the extra point, and the Lions had a 7-0 lead just 47 seconds into the season. The defense, meanwhile, held true to its stingy label by allowing Deer Park a 27-yard field goal on their first possession, but nothing more until the final play of the night. Matter of fact, the defense set up the Lions' next two touchdowns as Darrell Evans recovered a Deer fumble at the 8 and Willie McCorder picked off a Deer pass and returned it to the 17. Lewis Fight turned Evans' fumble recovery into six points on a three-yard run behind a wall of blockers on the right side, McCorder's interception became seven points when Demetrius Foster tossed 20 yards to Roy Ross and Strother tacked on the point after attempt. The final was Waco High 20, Deer Park 11. White was the game's leading rusher with 105 yards on 14 carries. The Lions invaded Lamarck for game two and jumped out to an early lead, driving 62 yards in 10 plays and capping the drive with a 25-yard Jack Strother field goal. Ernest Bodges set up the next Lions point by tackling punter Peter Landry at the Lamarck 24. Two plays later, Strether hit tight end Elroy Cross for a touchdown, and Waco High enjoyed a 10-0 lead. The defense kept it that way through the end of the first quarter as Derek Randall intercepted a Cougar drive at the Lion 13. The special teams even added to the margin when Sean Carter tackled Michael Houston in the end zone on a punt return, and the Lions had built a 12-0 advantage. But Anthony Furlow was flagged for roughing the punter midway through the second period, and that seemed to set off a spark in the hometown Cougars. Quarterback Chip Fields moved them the final 49 yards for a TD after the roughing penalty, scoring on a three-yard option keeper around left end. Then in the final minute of the half, he drove them 67 yards for a 14-12 lead on a five-yard pass to Houston. Lamarck continued the onslaught with a 27-yard pass to Richard Woodley in the third quarter, which upped the advantage to 21-12. The Lions did manage to keep it close with a 19-yard TD connection between Struther and Roy Ross in the fourth quarter, but Derek Callis ended Waco's comeback bid by returning the ensuing kickoff 80 yards, making the final Lamarck 28, Waco high 19. <laughs> Another quick start for the Lions when they hosted Wichita Falls at Paul Tyson Field in week three. An unstoppable ground attack rolled up 20 points in the first 13 minutes, and this time the opponent wasn't allowed to strike back. Greg White was the primary weapon, scoring the first touchdown from nine yards out after a seven-play, 58-yard initial drive. The next drive took eight plays to go 54 yards, and Lewis Fight got the six on a four-yard jaunt. White then exploded for a 42-yard TD run on the first play of the Lions' next possession, and a 26-yard field goal by Jack Strother made it 23-0 Lions at intermission. The Coyotes did manage to drive 63 yards in 11 plays on the first possession of the second half, but that seemed to add only fuel to the Lions' fire. Willie McCorder returned the ensuing kickoff 41 yards, and then White added another 30 to the drive by sliding off tackle to the Coyote 12. Travis Gibson got the call for the touchdown, and the Lions were in control 30-6. Wichita Falls did manage to score once more, but ate six minutes of the clock in doing so. There was just enough time left for one more touchdown for the Lions, and Steve Graham got that on a one-yard plunge. The final was Waco High 37, Wichita Falls 12. Greg White finished the night with 126 yards on 11 carries.
tone for the district opener at Round Rock Westwood was set with the Knights' first snap. A lion fumble was recovered by the Warriors, and Randy Pitt turned it into a 25-yard field goal. Fortunately for the Lions, they were able to turn more of the Warriors' miscues into points than Round Rock capitalized on Lions' turnovers. After several miscues, the Lions scored twice in less than two minutes. Travis Gibson capped a 10-play 69-yard drive with a four-yard TD run, and then moments later, Jack Struther recovered a Warrior fumble on the ensuing kickoff, which set up Greg White for a two-yard TD jaunt. Just before half, though, Waco High fumbled a punt that Darren Pollard recovered for Round Rock. A 25-yard pass from John Dean to Jeremy Cole was good for the touchdown, and the score stood 13-10 Waco High at intermission. The second half was all Waco High, as Greg White scampered 44 yards for a TD, and Lewis Fight added a 14-yard pay dirt prance to make the final 27-10 Lions. Officially on the night, the Warriors recovered five Waco fumbles, while the Lions covered up three Warrior fumbles and picked off three Round Rock passes. Lions dialed long distance when they hosted Georgetown in week five. After failing to reach his party on two first quarter field goals, Jack Struther dialed Roy Ross for a 78 yard bomb that opened the lines to touchdown town. Greg White got through the Eagle jamming devices on the Lions' next possession for a 53 yard TD jaunt, so at halftime, the Lions enjoyed a 14 0 lead. White went long distance again with the Lions' first possession of the second half on a draw play, which he weaved into a 56-yard score. Eagle fumbles recovered by Darrell Evans and Patrick Mitchell were also turned into TDs, first on a five-yard pass from Strother to Travis Gibson, and second on a three-yard toss from Demetrius Foster to Leroy Davis. The defense caused eight turnovers in all, recovering five fumbles and intercepting three passes. The 33-0 final moved the Lions to 2-0 in district play. Season analysts said either Waco High or Colleen would win the district title in 1988. So when the two teams met during week six, fireworks were expected. Colleen led up the scoreboard first as quarterback Dewan Haskins hit Sean York for a 58 yard touchdown strike. But the Lions fired the next two salvos on a two yard run by Greg White and a 36 yard TD toss from Jack Struther to Roy Ross. The Kangaroos, though, retied the game, going 71 yards in seven plays. Haskins got the final 42 yards on a keeper. The Lions, though, weren't about to relinquish the lead as Strother found Lewis Fight on a 47-yard pass, and then Travis Gibson took a pitch around left end for the six. The Roos did manage a 32-yard field goal just before the half, so at the intermission, the Lions held on to a slim 2017 lead. Colleen took over the scoreboard 24-20 in the third quarter, eating up nine minutes of the clock on an 80-yard drive, which took 20 plays. But the Lions didn't wait as long to recapture the advantage as Greg White broke loose for a 78-yard touchdown gallop. White up the lead to 10 by turning a bad kangaroo punt into a one-yard TD plunge, but the Roos weren't about to surrender as Haskins connected with York again on a 69-yard touchdown pass. The real game breaker, though, was this 43-yard return by Lewis Fight on the ensuing kickoff. That set up an 8-yard TD pass from Struther to Ross, and Greg White would later add a 31-yard TD run to make the final 47-31 Lions. Waco High was now all alone in first place at 3-0, as Colleen Ellison lost to Westwood 10-7.
Game 7 brought the Copper's Cove Bulldogs and their run-and-shoot offense to Paul Tyson Field. By the time the dogs left Waco, though, the Lions had renamed the Cove attack the shoot-and-foot offense. Rayford High was the first to turn back the Bulldogs as he intercepted a Billy Parks pass to set up a three-yard touchdown plunge by Greg White. Darrell Smith also stepped in front of a Parks bullet during the first quarter and set up Travis Gibson for a 26-yard TD jaunt. Even when it wasn't given great field position by the defense, the Lions' offense seemed to be able to score at will. White broke loose for a 26-yard TD scamper on Waco's third possession of the night. And even when the Bulldogs did manage to find the end zone, the Lions answered right back, thanks in part to this fake punt executed by Lewis Fight. That set up a 13-yard TD connection from Jack Strether to Marcus Murphy, so by halftime, the Lions enjoyed a 28-7 advantage. It was more of the same in the third quarter as White scored on a 10-yard run and Gibson hit pay dirt from 16 yards away. Steve Graham finished the scoring in the fourth period on a four-yard run to make the final Waco 46, Coppers Cove 7. On the night, the Lions amassed 500 yards of offense while the defense held Cove to minus 30 yards on the ground. <laughs> A trip to Round Rock was on the schedule for week eight, and the Lions just picked up where they left off. Greg White went 15 yards to cap off a 66-yard drive on the Lions' first possession for a quick 7-0 lead. Then Travis Gibson got in the scoring act with a 7-yard TD run and a 5-yard touchdown pass from Jack Struther. Struther added more points on a one-yard plunge early in the fourth quarter, while Leroy Davis added a seven-yard touchdown jaunt. The defense got into the scoring act late in the fourth quarter with a safety, and when it was all said and done, the Lions were victorious 36-0. On a roll with a district championship in sight, the Lions went to Colleen for a battle with the Ellison Eagles in Game 9. A victory this night would assure the Lions of the title, but the Eagles had other ideas. Quarterback Michael Harge limbered up his seldom-used passing arm for a 37-yard touchdown strike to Darren Washington and a 39-yard TD toss to Albert Canty. Greg White did answer back with a 13-yard touchdown run in the second quarter, but Willie Whitfield broke loose 39 yards for the Eagles and gave Ellison a 27 halftime lead. The Lions figured out how to stop the Eagles by halftime, but they didn't solve the Ellison defense. Jack Strother did pass five yards to Travis Gibson in the third quarter to close the gap to 2014, but other Lion attempts at the end zone were turned away. The final chance was a third down pass intended for Scott Roundtree, but Darren Washington picked it off and delayed the Lions championship celebration for another week. The final hurdle on the road to the playoffs was Temple, and the arch rival Wildcats blocked the path as long as they could. Twice in the first quarter, they mounted impressive drives deep in the Lion territory, only to be turned away by Willie McWhorter, who broke through both times to block field goal attempts. The Lions then mounted an impressive drive of their own, going 85 yards in 17 plays and capping it with a one-yard plunge by Travis Gibson. Two Jack Struther field goals carried Waco to a 13-0 lead at halftime, but Temple threatened to make a game of it early in the fourth quarter on a four-yard pass from Sam Hill to James Hudson. The Lions, though, had one more sustained drive in their playbook, kept alive by this 33-yard pass and run by Marcus Murphy. 
Greg White added 27 more yards with a good fake on the next play to set up a touchdown, which White scored on a three-yard run. Walter Fuller closed out the scoring by tackling the Temple punter in the end zone for a safety. The 22-7 victory claimed a co-championship with the Killeen Kangaroos and sent the Lions into the playoffs for the third consecutive year. Lions' trip to the playoffs was short-lived as a turnover bug infected the offense. Two fumbles and two interceptions were just part of the Lions' problems as Lufkin took advantage of every Waco miscue. The only earned touchdown for the Panthers came on their second possession when Eric Curl capped a sustained drive with an 11-yard TD run. Early in the second half, Jack Strother was tackled in the end zone for a safety and Lufkin was out front 9-0. Ernest Bodges, though, set up the Lions' only touchdown with an incredible one-handed interception, which he returned 69 yards to the Panther 4. Greg White then got the call for the touchdown to bring the Lions within three, but the PAT was intercepted by Johnny Johnson and returned 100 yards for an 11-6 Lufkin advantage. A blocked punt set up the Panthers' next touchdown as the ball rolled down at the Lion 2. The final straw of the bizarre events was a deep snap on another punt, which sailed out of the end zone. The final score was Lufkin 21, Waco High 6. Despite the bizarre ending, the Lions celebrated a successful season with an 8-3 record and a district co-championship.